Hey guys, appreciate the opportunity to talk to you guys on the checkers. Uh, we'll be reviewing the plug-in D-checker, the USB wired version, and the Bluetooth service checker a little bit on this video. Uh, we do not have a video covering the service checker uh, for Strictly VRV, although any of the D-checkers or the Bluetooth service checker can be used on the VRV product. You're just limited to talking to the one piece of equipment you're plugged into. Uh, you won't see anything on the daisy-chained uh, system. All right, just a few examples of plugging it in. This will be the same for the wired D-Checker USB version and the Bluetooth service checker. And this is an RXB, and I'll show you a little close-up there. You see the left and right before and after plugging in. It's the only jack it's going to fit into. Uh, nothing else to fit in there. Uh, this is in my lab here. You can see this is an RX, and that would be an RX09A, I believe. And I don't know why I'm holding the camera and using one hand there. But you'll see this about the same spot as you do with the RXB. Board's slightly different. Uh, we'll see the spot there, and I'll cut to the picture with it plugged in. Uh, kind of the center of the board on a lot of them. Uh, if you are going to an RX09A or an RXB, you might require the isolator. Uh, that's an add-on to the Bluetooth. It will require uh, the uh, USB-C style to be plugged into the wall to power up the Bluetooth service checker connector uh, to get a good recording. All right, you'll see some of this in training. This is the module we'll see on uh, the 5MXS, and we see it on the larger MXLs uh, located in the top left as you uh, look at the wiring portion. And you'll see the uh, D-checker plug uh, is in that portion, so you will not have to access the board. Uh, this will have a wire off the back of here, a little feed down to the plug in the board. But a lot easier to access without removing the lid when you're working on a, a larger MXL or the 5MXS. And we'll jump to the unitary product. Uh, this does work on the Goodman and a Mana. And of course, the Daikin 20 and the, the uh, Inverter 18, if you have one of those. But it works on our 17 uh, fit as well. Uh, and this is one in the large body. This will be the large control board. You'll see it in the top right. Uh, here is a uh, VRV system. This will be a VRV 4S. And you'll see if the board uh, has a section where it's blocked off or behind a heat sink. They add this little harness. They do a great job with it. Uh, and on almost every one of my touch, we have that harness right out in the open. And there's just me plugging in with one hand while I hold the camera. Uh, fairly easy to go. And then we'll see a, a picture here of the 48. It's an RX SQ, a life unit. All right, before any of you uh, Daikin guys say anything, I just cycled power on my uh, RXSQ. So it's reinitializing. Uh, that's why I have the three lights going. All right, the Bluetooth service checker uh, that is Bluetooth to a mobile device is an app. If we're going to load on the computer and use the Bluetooth service checker or the plug in USB service checker, we'll have to download the software. Uh, if you purchase the D-Checker, the wired version, USB, there'll be a disc in there. If it is not on the disc or you want to make sure you get D-Checker 3, uh, you can search Google. Uh, Dyke in America has it. I also have it on my website, johnstonecaffertygroup.com. And here you'll find the D-Checker manual as well as the software package. And um, we're coming up on it here and we'll see it right there. And we can just hit the download button. Also above here on some of the other videos I show, uh, we do have uh, the drivers in case we have an issue and we'll view them in a little bit. We'll go ahead and download that. You see it in the bottom left there downloading. Also just above the zip file, you'll find the drivers. If you plug in your USB and your computer doesn't see it, uh, you'll have to update the drivers and they both appear on here as well. Uh, in this case, we're going to go ahead and we're going to open the folder. And when this uh, extracts, we'll extract it to a folder. That's the folder we run in. So we'll copy that folder we extracted it to and put it in uh, anywhere. And you put it in documents. And I think in this example, I just move it to pictures so I know where it's at. And we'll see, uh, speed it up a little bit there with Movie Magic. Uh, but we'll see when you open that file, you see uh, the executable to run the program under there you're not going to see an executable to install anything and here i'm just re-zipping it uh, to another spot uh, but you're going to see just the d checker file and it will run from this position here and i'll actually produce you'll have to get permissions i'll produce a, a shortcut in this folder or move the shortcut to the desktop and when you do load it you'll have to go to options immediately and under options the top you'll see the com port uh, you'll have to do that and the service name as well I'm going to go ahead and close this out and pretend I installed it because I already have it on my computer locally. 
and I'll go down on my D checker and we'll open it and look at the options. And here I'll see a COM port. And if I don't see a COM port to choose from, my drivers aren't loaded. I can go to my device manager and we can see what's going on there. Uh, we'll also load the service person in the office as well. I see a few screen jumps here. I uh, edited a little bit of stuff to get it going correctly. Uh, you'll see I'll go in here and I'm just going to, uh, in this case, do a mobile data import and bring in a, a TGZ file. It just happens to be on my desktop and I can hit OK. And you can see I can bring it in uh, and it will add it to my customers. I can go to customer info and I can see that TGZ file that I brought in. All right, when trading files between each other in the D checker, I prefer to use the customer portion. We go into the customer. In case I'll choose a customer, I can hit export and it'll ask me where it wants it. And when I export it, it's just going to be a zip file. Uh, also, when I go back in and I can import it, it's going to do a search and you can see there's test lab and I can say OK and import that file as well. Uh, and I'll hit OK in this case because it's already in there. Uh, happen to have two files in a customer. You can have 20, 30. You can have quite a list of uh, files in there. Uh, you can uh, specifically go in and look at the files uh, because they will be date coded in the name and the map name. And here's just an example of opening. I'm taking a look at the data. Uh, we're going to switch over to graph view. Remember uh, the timeline. If you look at the other video, we show how to use it. Uh, move along the timeline, then change your data. Uh, increase the screen to get more information if you needed to see the percent of demand up here on the screen as well. And we'll come in and we'll see uh, if I'm on an air handler, I'll see airflow. And if I'm on an MBVC style unit, I won't. Uh, the gas furnaces will also show airflow. We'll go ahead and exit. And I thought I'd splice this video in uh, kind of out of place from the others because I just wanted some live video. Uh, but this happens to be a small tonnage uh, fit unit. This will be a DX17, an air conditioning model. And you'll see it'll be on the little sub board directly in front instead of on the large main board. So whenever you're on the small body and you have the uh, board underneath the lid, uh, you'll see it on the sub board. And here we go. I'm just going to open a laptop and we're going to plug in the USB. And it is all loaded up on the USB. Uh, I'm going to show how to go in and we'll check our drivers. If it doesn't appear for you, we'll check our drivers and see what's going on with the uh, driver issue. So when you run the software, you will be able to open the D-Checker. You go to the folder and open it. And as you go in and look at options, if you don't see anything on the COM port, if it happens to be empty, it may be an issue where uh, the USB was not recognized by the computer. In this case, I'm just going to go into the device manager. And if you're not computer savvy uh, at this point, you want to get help. I'm just going to enter device manager. And this happens to be a Windows 10 machine. Uh, and under device manager, I'll go down and look at my COM ports. And uh, when I see my COM ports, I'll actually view the US serial port, the COM7 in this case. I have a few other Bluetooth items on the other ones. Uh, if you don't see it loaded on the COM port, at this point you can plug and unplug your USB device and see if it reappears on there. Uh, but you can go in and update the driver. And when you hit update driver, it's going to tell you to search. And as long as you download those driver files from Johnstone Cafferty Group, uh, you can load them at that point. All right, when you're set there, we're able to hit record. So we'll go ahead and hit recording in this case. We can also just go to the customer data and open a customer. But we're going to say add new. Uh, and we can do a customer ID, a very specific ID. And this one I'll just call YouTube uh, and hit OK. Uh, and if I scroll down, I'll see it's added as a customer. And I can go in and edit this customer and add more information, the address, etc. Uh, as we go along as well, if I needed to add more, let's say you had a campus where you had multiple buildings, you can have all of the campus under one name. So at this point, we're going to do a new recording. Uh, so you'll see in this, I'm going to double click YouTube, open it. And I'm going to go to new and you'll see it gives it a map name, that specific year, the date, the time, the minute and the second uh, broken down. But I can hit auto select and it will do a search. If I get this error, uh, don't be concerned. You want to check your COM port. I'm going to hit it again and see if it finds it. And uh, on occasion we get a hiccup and you'll see it's found one indoor unit uh, using the app protocol. We'll go to the data label file and we'll pick, in this case, the one that applies best. The data label tells it what each sensor is. Uh, so you know it'll, if it's on a suction line or a liquid line, it knows that. You also see me circling around the COM port and the Bluetooth service checker port. If we click that, we'll go to the COM port with our Bluetooth device. Then we can use our uh, wireless selection. So we're already in. Now we'll go in and we'll see op data. And you'll see I saved this one. Uh, it's blank in the beginning. Uh, but you have to sit and wait. 
and there we go it just happened to come up i went to the graph too quick uh, but every five to ten seconds we're going to get looking at data and it may be blank when you first open it so have your patience if it remains blank you'll have to log off and back on again all right we're viewing the data we can go right down here to start record uh, and we can do a recording we'll hit okay uh, and we'll go ahead and you see in the bottom left it says preparing uh, it's actually recording in the background a little bit you'll see when the lap time comes up will be about 15 seconds in uh, it takes a little bit to start uh, i'll have people do a little one minute shots but, and that's fine as long as it's been running 20 minutes or more uh, you can do a one minute shot to kind of get a view uh, you also have a print screen option uh, i like the recording a little better it gives me a little uh, more uh, flexibility you can choose what you want to do with your graph you can turn items on and off and look at just the graph items uh, say superheat and subcool or the ev pulses separately on the graph uh, so you don't have to look at all the data in one shot and we'll go ahead and do a little recording time and uh, and then we're going to hit stop record when we're ready and stop record will uh there we go hit okay and then uh, we'll go back to the screen it's just going to be like we uh, are still viewing the information uh, but if I hit back, I uh, have the ability now to do something with that file. And you'll see I have a single file. I'm going to hit back and now go back in. I'm just going to hit uh, the customer info. And I can go back in here and I can look at the uh, YouTube file. And now I can just go up to the, uh, the edit map name, add data if I want. I can say uh, model, write whatever I want in there. If I was, like I said, a big campus with multiple units. Uh, I'm going to go back in one more time and do another detection i'm going to see it again i'm going to pick the same data file as we go in and we're going to do another quick uh, recording uh, you'll see i got the partial data come up here it's good for you guys to see this kind of stuff and we'll wait five to ten seconds uh, and we'll see it populate the full amount of data and that's not uncommon for that to happen some of my data will come on and off during recording as well that's what's so important when you hit a playback to go through your graph and uh, choose a timeline when you have all your data up here and uh, at this point i would normally hit start record and do another recording and then stop it and that would be done in the same manner in this case we'll go ahead and skip it and we'll just hit escape uh, and we're going to put ourselves back to the uh, main menu here and take a look. And at this point, we're going to go back and look at our customer info. And we can go back and hit export. And we tell it go to the desktop. But we're going to choose our customer here. I'm going to choose the YouTube, hit export, and click OK. So if someone requested this file from me, I would now see a zip file on my desktop. I could send to somebody and you open it up and you're going to see all kinds of stuff and it's not something you're going to be able to recognize a file type or a word document or anything but if i go back in here now and i'm going to go back to my customer and i'm going to import that if i were to send this to you you would see the youtube video and whatever file and hit okay in this case i'll have to uh, hit cancel or okay it's just going to write over the top of the other file that's already in there and when i double click i should see the uh the uh, two files in this case the one recording I have and I'm gonna hit play and as it comes up you'll see the data uh, and click along the timeline I didn't get much data in there but as I click along the timeline I'll change my data and you can see I chose a spot that's missing a little data all right, I hope you found that helpful. Uh, remember, we have more data in the Bluetooth service checker, anything with the D checker. Uh, we have quite a few videos on that, uh, and hopefully those help get you in the right direction. You're always free to uh, let us know if you want specific information. Uh, you can drop us a line, uh, and we'd be happy to work with you on that. I'll go ahead and put uh, my email up on here uh, if you want to contact me uh, or request a file. And as long as I don't have too many, I'll make time to uh, send you out a file. Just be specific what kind of equipment you want the file on. Uh, the uh, unitary style equipment like the Fit or a 20 or a mini split multi split BRV Sky Air.